game. You're up yeah. there the other day. The Rangers and Islanders. Is uh, have you ever paid attention to so much hockey before? Yeah, that was my first hockey game ever in New York, and they, it was pretty dope. They gave my own uh, jersey and everything. They get, they put number one. They put T City on it, so uh, that was fun. And they won that night, so it was perfect. <laughs> so now you're back in town for Vegas. Maybe bring a little a little good luck for the Golden Knights. Well, I heard they're already on fire, so they don't need it. But I'll just be there for support and, and watch my second hockey game, man. Nice. Well, I want to talk to you since New York. Uh, it, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. Uh, starting out a couple days before we saw you, when we found out that you know you were willing to step up on short notice and, and fight Habib and Irving Madoff, yeah. and uh, you know it kind of came out of left field. But then as soon as I think fans and, and us started thinking about it, it was like that would have been a pretty good fight. <laughs> uh, so talk to you about why you know why you were willing to take a risk like that when you've been kind of working towards the goal that you're at, and then you were willing to step out and take that. Well, the thing is, um, for some reason, the short notice fights seem to, to bring out the best of me. And uh, when I look at Khabib, I just look at the style. And, and I, I go, man, this guy's a top wrestler, and I'm a bottom jiu-jitsu guy. And when I, when I really thought about it, I took the fight no matter what. <clears throat> but when I actually, you know, when you make a decision, you don't fully think through it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When I started finally thinking through it, I was like, I got excited. I was like... Because not too many people present a, a good ground game from the bottom. They either survive a little bit, it's kind of boring, but not too many people are, are attacking from the bottom, um, hurting with elbows, or, or they just don't bring that kind of game because it takes a long time to develop. Versus me, I grew up in that situation where I was always the, the bottom guy, always getting beat up by all these guys, so I had to learn how to adapt my game to that. And then when you look at him, he's, he's been a wrestler his whole life. So it's like, I've been a bottom guy my whole life. You've been a wrestler your whole life. You're undefeated. I'm undefeated. <laughs> I'm not a small uh, featherweight. So let's, I was just, let's do it. You know, I was curious to see what was going to happen. Well, I wonder, you know, like you said, because it wasn't a fight that I don't think anybody ever thought of. And then once we thought about it, like you, I think we all got excited too. So I wonder, is that now something that's like, you know, definitely on your radar? It's on my, yeah, it's on my radar. I have, I have a big fight right now. Um, but that one for sure is on, it's on the radar. I have to be successful July 7th, then I can hopefully make that happen after. I want to ask you about everything else that kind of happened in New York. I mean, you got kind of a front row seat for everything that unfolded. Here you are, this, this breath of fresh air, bringing this message of positivity and hope and love and all this good stuff, right? And then you get a front row seat for everything that unfolds with the opposite of that, chaos and madness and everything. What, what, what was going through your mind in, as you saw this kind of, kind of all play out in New York? I was watching it the same time you guys were watching it. I was... I got on my phone and I was like, Tana did what? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And then you're like trying to find different uh, little like uh, videos, right? Because there's only so many clips and you're trying to find out the whole story. And then um, I started talking to people. I'm like, yo, what happened? And they start telling me what went down and this and that. And I was like, I mean, I don't really have much to say about it. Yeah, it's not my, wasn't my problem. You know, it sucks that some fighters didn't get to fight because of it. But yeah, it just, I don't really want to word it out because I don't want to. Yeah, well, I don't want to stir the pot, but I mean, is it tough? Because it feels like everybody's trying to find a direction in the sport, right? I mean, Connor is unquestionably the biggest star in the sport, but I think everybody steps back and goes, that was ridiculous. You know, and then we got people like you, you know, Rose Nami Yunus gets a lot of credit for her positivity as well. I just wonder, you know, do you feel like you can be that big of a superstar, that successful? And, and keep this positive mindset and keep this positive attitude? Or, or do you see when somebody's kind of playing the villain role and they're the star, do you, do you think, maybe I'm making the wrong decisions? No, there's only one Connor. Everyone who's tried to be like Connor, you can tell they're just front. you know? You can easily, you can see by the way they go in there, you're like, come on, shut up. Um, but for me, you, I'm just me. That, that's, what, that's what I realized the best thing could be is when I talk to people, they're like, especially, getting the sport, they were like, oh, you gotta be a character, you gotta be this, and my coach told me, I don't know if I can cuss or not, but he goes, F that. He's like, just be you, bro. He goes, you don't have to lie on the thing, you don't have to pretend, you don't have to remember about something you made up before. He goes, just be you, and, and you can't go wrong with being you. So that's what we did, and I'm happy I stuck through it, man, because I'm just me. If I, if I ever get pissed off, it's I'm legitly pissed off. So far, it hasn't happened. Very nice. Now you got this fight with Max Holloway. I think people are pretty uh, 
pretty excited about it. I don't imagine there'll be a lot of trash talk, any of that. It doesn't seem necessary, but I mean, two young guys in the sport, two of the best in the game. I mean, how excited are you about, about this matchup? I'm ready. It's, uh, how can I say it, man? This is something that for the longest time was just, uh, just a vision, you know? And then now it's actually a plan. It's, we're actually starting training camp for it. And it's still surreal. It's like, holy shit, I got the shot. It's like, all right. And then I was nervous because I was like, man, am I going to be able to fight Frankie on three weeks' notice to get this shot, to, to steal it away? And, and I'm happy that the outcome was what it was. And uh, now we get to fight. So it's, uh, how many fighters could say that they, they got to the, to the chance there, you know? Especially coming up from where I came from. Something could bad could happen after this fight and never fight again. And I can just say, you know what? I can tell I can tell people at least, hey, I went all the way undefeated to the belt. So I'm already winning, you know? The belt is just something extra. How concerned were you with Max possibly taking that fight and not being able to maybe fight in July if something happened? I wasn't concerned because I, I, I was just like, he's going to have to fight me no matter what. Now it's just a matter of how much off time do I have. And if he did become champion, then you're like, I'm still, I still got a guaranteed title fight. Now it's just a matter of who is it going to be against. So I wasn't too concerned about it. I was a little upset that, because uh, I was like, his foot's hurt. He's not going to take it. And then he took it and I was like, I was like, but I can't hate on it, you know? Like, you, me and you were willing to do the same thing that we're, a lot of other fighters were not. So I took my hat to him on that, because for anyone to step up, when you hear Khabib, you're like, I need a training camp. And then they gave us six days, and we weren't even training. So it was like, he was down, I was down, because he's champ. Dana White did tell me he has priority, obviously. And uh, he was just waiting to hear his call back, and he took it, and, you know, the, the commission pulled him off from, I guess he was declared unfit to fight. And I was, I was in New York waiting for that situation. And I was not eating on purpose, you know? I was putting things, I was eating pizza, but I wasn't. <laughs> and then, um, but Thursday night came, and I was like, I'm not getting it. I was like, this guy's making weight tonight. So then I, uh, I went to Junior's and I had some cheese steak, I mean, <laughs> some cheesecake, and I kind of like ate my frustrations away. And in the morning they called, I was like, he didn't make, what, or, and I was like, no. I was like, oh well. If you hadn't eaten, would you, would you have taken it on a day? Well, they didn't call me, but I was, I was gonna reach out, but then they realized you have like an hour and a half to make weight. And for me, it was like, Got 15 pounds in, in an hour and a half is, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, it just wasn't gonna happen, especially after that cheesesteak. <laughs> or that cheesecake. How, how was the cheesecake? <laughs> it was good. I had the strawberry one, I had the regular one, I had the blueberry one. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's the best in, in New York, so I was like, I gotta, I can't just have one, I gotta try all the flavors. Which one was the best one of the day? To me, I love the strawberry one. Yeah, the strawberry one just was different. I always loved strawberry cheesecake growing up, and when I tried it over there, I was like, damn, now I miss it. Does that say something about how great this fight is, though? I mean, in this era, of it seems like everybody's positioning themselves and trying to figure out which is the right financial fight, which is the right, you know, you two guys were both willing to say, I don't care, I'll, I'll, I'll take on the guy that the, the boogeyman that everybody is afraid of. Yeah. You think that says something for how big this fight is gonna be? That the you two guys are guys like that? Boy, I just I always said this way. Two guys, you have two guys that are down to fight. Where he's not a point scorer, I'm not a point scorer. We want to get in there and at the end of the day we want to finish each other. Which means we gotta hurt each other. And for me that makes the best kind of fights. When you got two guys who really are going for it. This guy is a champ. And he still goes for it. That says something a lot. Because you see a lot of guys, they earn their way to the championship, and then they play it safe to keep it. He's going all in. I'm all in. I've always been all in. If I ever become champ, I'm still going to be all in. So I just think that that makes a great chemistry for crazy fights. And uh, that's hopefully what we can give the fans uh, July 7th. How would you describe what your win over Frankie meant 
like, I mean, we know what it, it did. It gave you a title shot, but like, what did it mean to you? For me, it meant I made history. I'm in this game to try to make history. Uh, I made history when becoming the first fighter to ever have four third, third round consecutive finishes. And I was like, okay, I'll take that record. It was a weird record, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, and then we had the cup fight, and then I was like, okay, now I gotta prove to these guys I'm not just a third, you know, like a third round luck charm. And I got that fight out the way. And, um, and the Frankie fight was like, almost like similar to Khabib's. The, 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 Khabib, uh, the, the Khabib thing was because you have three weeks to train. And there's this huge pressure on your finisher and this guy's never been finished. So my whole thing was like, I want to be the guy who finishes him. And it's, and it's just crazier that it's on three weeks notice that I didn't get full camp. And for me, it was just, it, it proved what, I, what, I, what I'm capable of. It proved to me that um, sometimes training camps are just hypes. You know, if you're down and you fight well, you'll go in there and you do what you got to do. And and that's what it proved to me that I can go in there on a short week's notice, fight the guy that was going to fight for the belt, the guy who's never been finished, and, and be able to become successful on that. And for me, that it played out perfect because he wasn't hurt, I wasn't hurt. He just had his fight with the Cub. He did well. I'm happy that he stepped in uh, again, very at a fast comeback. And he's doing good because I was, you know, I was kind of rooting for him. I was going to say, did it make you feel good a little bit the other day? Because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, why is he rushing back in there? And I guess, yeah. you know, if he lost that, then maybe they could go back to your fight and <laughs> say, well, Frank Yeager's not what he used to be. I yeah. mean, so was there a part of you that was like, nope, see, I told you, he's still the guy. Why well, well, fought both guys, you know, and, and to me, I like Frankie better. You know, it's just I, I studied both of them as a human being. I got to talk to him, both of them. Cup still kind of, I don't know, you don't kind of like me too much, but uh, Frankie was cool, man. And uh, so obviously I'm rooting for the guy who, who was cool. And uh, he treated me nice, and I'm glad he won. Why doesn't Cup like you? Or I don't know. I don't know. Was it just something he said to you? or? No, I just keep seeing thing, people tag me thing, and he's like, yeah, Brian, not going to, I guess he blamed him getting sick or something for the fight in Fresno, and then he said I wasn't going to be able to beat Frankie and, and one thing is like if one thing is if you're bitter you're bitter and, and I get it man but I, I don't want to go up to I'm not gonna come to media and, and then purposely start talking trash so whatever man you know I, I still got nothing against the guy if he wants to shake my hand and we can talk so I can be cool that's something I, I, I'd actually like I don't like having enemies in the sport um, <clears throat> so yeah man so now you do get a training, a long training camp for this fight. Yeah. You get some time to study, match. What do you think, uh, you know, just initial thoughts, what, what do you think are some of his strengths and maybe some of his weakness? Well, his strength is his striking and his wrestling defense. And his weakness is the ground. You know, he's got good jiu-jitsu, but I feel like I have something different when it comes to the ground. And um, we just have to make a training camp based on all his strength and his weaknesses and how we're going to make it happen during the fight because we have 25 minutes in, in there, you know, so we got some time. It's not like we got three rounds. We got 25 minutes of fighting, and uh, just got to seize the right opportunity. Brian, based on what you just said, you think his weakness is the ground? What did you think was going to happen if he did make it to the Khabib fight? That was my concern. Is his wrestling defense good enough? Because if, if he could stop Khabib's takedowns, I feel he would have got the better of Khabib on the stand-up. He's, he's a big boy, too. So it's not like, oh, everyone looks at featherweight. No, you, when, if you would have seen them in the cage, you would go, damn, he's a featherweight. They would have just made you question it, because he's a big boy. But uh, the real question is with anyone who fights Khabib. If he gets you on the ground, what are you gonna do? And so far, he's been able to get everyone on the ground and just destroy them. For that reason, were you a little worried that, that, hey, I mean, this could go bad for Max, and when it goes bad against Habib, it looks really bad, and so that would take away from, from you know, some of the, uh, maybe some of the interest in our title fight, because this yeah. guy's been unbeatable, and then if, if Habib, Habib's in, then will people still be tuned well, into the fight? Was I that thought a thought of, of yours? I thought about it, but then I was going to say, he could always come back and say, he took it on six days notice, you know? So, it wouldn't be that bad. I, I feel people would regret, even if he lost, people would have credited him, like, yo, you're down to stepping on six days in order to fight a heavy uh, a guy who's heavier than you um, in a different weight class. So I feel like he would have got more credit than, than, than discredit. 
and it still would have been a good build up for the fight, you know, because he's just down. You've been so effective on you know short notice fights. What's what's the feeling like right now, knowing you've got you know what might seem like forever laying out in front of you before this fight? I mean, do you have to approach things differently? What's the plan? Are you you know concerned with no, overtraining man. or anything? Honestly, I just my life has been crazy this last year. This is gonna be my fourth fight in less than one year, which means I haven't had a life in a year. <laughs> I've just been training camp, training camp. I took one vacation and then. During that vacation, I got called to take the fight against Cubs, so I had to come back. So um, I'm just used to it. That's why, by, and I feel it's good because by the time I stepped in with Frankie, when I stepped in the arena, I was just, I was calm, man. I was, I had my headphones, I was singing, I was dancing. It, it didn't feel like before where I was fighting once or twice a year, where it's like they feel, the jitters feel new again. It was like, hey, Brian, welcome back to the office. I see, I've been seeing the staff so much lately. It's like, yo, what's up, guys? Good to see you again. Tonight, it's, not tonight I'm fighting, and then maybe two weeks from now, I'm going to see you at the fight. It's just, you know, for pleasure. But I've gotten used to the atmosphere, which I feel is, is good, because once I get used to the atmosphere, it's, I'm comfortable. And, and the more comfortable I become, the, the more relaxed I get in there. And when I'm relaxed and I'm in there, I just, you see these different sides of me that, that only happen when I'm in training camp. That people are like, how come you don't bring that out to the fight? It's because I was just not, I'm relaxed in training camp and I'm not that relaxed when you're in there. It's hard to be relaxed when you've got lights, camera, action, a guy trying to punch you in the face for real, as hard as he can, and it, the arena filled up screaming. It's not a, the easiest thing to relax in, you know? But uh, lately I have, I've been relaxing in it. It's kind of weird. How about just personally? I mean, you strike me as a guy that would Rather be just sitting outside in SoCal, you know, playing some dominoes with your boys or whatever. Instead, you're, you're having to travel around and, and, and do all these media responsibilities. I mean, but, you know, if you get that title, obviously this is, this is a taste of the champ life. I mean, personally, do you find it distracting, fulfilling? Are you enjoying it? What do you think? Um, it, it's a love-hate, you know, because obviously the waves have been good lately and, and you want to go surf and, and all these things. And... I want to travel, go to other places like Bali and things because I just want to serve good waves. And uh, New York, it's cold water, <laughs> no waves. Um, but it, it's good, man. It's a love hate thing. I get to bring my team with me. They get to, I don't just share these things alone. I, they come with me and they fly out and, and we just cruise the city together. And, and I saw a lot of things in New York that I didn't see when I went to my first time in New York. And uh, it, it feels good to have your friends with you. That, that ultimately, that's what it is. And now they're they're coming with me everywhere I go, and they're as much as I'm tripping out on it, they're having the same experience, and it, it's good to not go through things alone. So I've been I've been liking it. And then we come back, and it's like, hey, like, it's crazy. We're we're in New York. It's like we're all together in New York. Us like us three we're here right now. We're in New York. Look at that. Like that's the freaking that's you know like the Manhattan Bridge that's Brooklyn Bridge you're like we rode in it we walked in it you're like just tripping out and it, it felt good to see that with with the team you know from the hood you know to to living it differently it, it, I like it. What's that? What's that like? You, you know you you say coming from the hood. Do you have as you get bigger? Do you have to be a little cognizant of who's reaching out to you and what their motives might be? Uh, have you heard from some from some people that you haven't heard from for a while just because you're you're, you're doing really well for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to, yeah, but yeah, there's different things that, some different kind of politics that come with it, but yeah. What's that like? I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you get the belt, are you going to be as active as you've been? Because, you, you know, like you said, you've been busy, but, and I think that serves to your advantage. Uh, maybe even when, when you fought Frankie, I mean, he was not that active, and it might have, uh, been detrimental to him. No, I feel I have a couple goals that I want that I, I still have left, and I'm willing to, to keep working and, and pay the price for it. And uh, come if I become successful July 7th, I have plans to keep fighting till till summer of 2019. I, I want to set some things up, some couple fights that I think I would I would do that would challenge me. 
and that would be great for my career and and yeah I'm not gonna stop till hopefully I get these things you want to share those goals right now not yet I'd rather just let you guys see it as it unfolds if it unfolds you know because you can always paint the perfect picture and then it doesn't happen and it just sets you back a little bit so for me I don't want to jinx it I don't want to curse it I have the vision I'm treading hard and uh now I just gotta make it happen. When which you is say, part. I was gonna say, when you say till summer 2019, though, are you saying, and then that would be it, or that's just where the goals stop right now? Well, that's as far as the vision gets right now. <laughs> it's yeah, that's as far as it gets, because I don't see it getting any bigger than that by 2019. So we'll see what happens there. You beat a lot of the top featherweights on your way up to the title. If, if you beat uh, Max, how long would you like to stay in defending the title or that Khabib fight? Would you like to make that super fight as soon well, as possible? That's part of the plans that I'm thinking about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's, there's some super fights that <clears throat> that'll be dope, you know, that, that I just, as a fan, I want to see me in there, you know. I want to geek out about it. And the best part is I get to be in there and do it. So that's, that's a good thing, you know. Let me ask you as a fan. On your card, Derek Lewis and Ngannou gonna fight. As a fan, that's a great fight. No, what do you think about that fight? It's a crazy fight. Um, I'm glad to be sharing that night with him, you know? Especially because they're gonna fight before me, so I get to watch it while I'm warming up and get all hyped up about it. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not gonna say who wins, but I'm excited for it. This is Lock Fest, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, it's two big boys. <laughs> Any thoughts on the main event? Cormier Stipe? <laughs> <laughs> another tough one? It's another tough one, man, because I like both guys. Um, I like Stipe because Stipe is, is a fireman, and, and it's just, I look up to him in that part. To be able to, to go through, through school and, and, and become a fireman and hold a title, that's like, that's unheard of. And then for Daniel Cormier to step up in weight class when he's already dominating his, it's another, you gotta tell your hat to these guys, you know? So it's hard to talk bad about both of them and, and kind of even go with one fighter. And uh, like both, man, I just, yeah. It's a fight where you like. Hey Brian, a couple weeks ago, uh, Justin Gaethje fought and uh, he was coming off the first loss of his career. And one thing that he was talking about was he, he actually said if I, I would give young kids advice to get their first loss out of the way. Just just get it out of the way so that way you don't got to talk about it and it doesn't hang over your head that you got an undefeated record. Yeah. As a guy who's undefeated, do you have any idea what he's talking about? I do. Sometimes I, I felt like the pressure would be gone if, if I just got it out the way. If I lost and, and the fans talked whatever, they had to talk, made the crazy memes, you know, and, and it just I went through that phase and now I know what it's like. You know, um, but at the same time, I lost so many other things in my life where it doesn't. That's why I feel like I don't care about a loss, and that's why I keep. I think I feel like I keep winning is because I don't care about it. You see me down two rounds, I just keep fighting because I love it, and I want to finish you. I'm in your face. I lost. I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of things in life that, that to me are, are far much worse than than a little record. Just says, and one. You know, it just means. You lost a fight, but life in general, you know, I lost so much other things that I don't really care for. What's the update on the foundation right now, man? You're making some Hollywood ties, getting some attention. Robert Downey Jr. just got on board with me. He's helping me out. Uh, a lot of other people are, are getting on board and helping me out. But what I didn't realize is for you to have a foundation, it's a lot of work. And, uh, and with, like, having all these – crazy title fights and everything, or, or just the success that I've had with the career so far, and trying to do this, it's a lot of work, but I'm still managing both. I put a lot of my own money to start the foundation, and now all I'm waiting is for the state to clear the 501c3. That's why I haven't really been doing so many things, because everyone's like, oh yeah, you're just taking selfies now, and just thinking you're Hollywood's like, no man, these guys are inviting me to these things. Obviously, I'm showing you guys my experience, but I can't do nothing yet because the state has to clear it in order for you to do anything. You can't do nothing unless the state clears it. So we're trying to rush that as much as fast as we can. And hopefully by the end of this, either July or August, it clears from what I've been told. And once it clears, it, the ship's full, you know, it's taken off. So I can't wait to show everyone 
the plans on that. But I do have a cool little project that I'm working on when I get home. Uh, it's gonna be fun, yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go to school and call this kid out, you know, and, and kind of help him, help him get his life together.